Before we continue the video, I want to let everyone know that everything you see here in today and see is not financial advice or trading advice of any kind. It is just merely for entertainment, comedic, and educational purposes only. Bear in mind, I eat red crayons for breakfast, and you should too, but if you do, you may get a tummy ache, so eat them at your own discretion. I am not responsible for any consequences you would have by listening to anything you see in this video. I hope you guys learned something and enjoy the, your time here in, uh, on our chart room and the rest of this channel. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, welcome back, team, for round number two. Today, we're going to be covering XDC and XLM. Before we get into that, I'm going to show you a very special map about XRP that I missed and I didn't I didn't show you guys. I can't wait to show you guys, so take a look. So on XRP, on this four-hour chart, this is one of my more private maps. Uh, I I sometimes post pictures from this one, but I wanted to show you guys uh, these things. So remember how I drew this parabolic? This is the parabolic. It looks like that, okay? Um, when price breaks through a parabolic, normally you can go straight down, depending on the type of parabolic it is and how we finish. So, you know, price was bouncing on that line here, and all of a sudden we broke down, and that's the sword cut. That's the pain point, okay? But usually with a parabolic, price usually just quickly breaks through. So let's take a look. Now, when we came through, price went immediately down, but it got stopped on that line. Well, remember what that line was from our last analysis videos is this was that on the daily chart. This is a very powerful, strong point, guys. Very, very strong. And so we saw price coming up to that area and just bounced right on that line which we covered in our last. But now I want to show you something else. Look at what's happening right now. So this is the actual zone for the sword cut. It's about the range from those candles on when they cut. And that's what, it's an area we have to pay very extra special attention because something very good can happen at this area. And I want to show you what it looks like. So normally what happened was price would go through this line and it come up to the sort area and it's in price came down came up to the sort area and came right back down to that rest support and then from there price broke through the sort area that was very interesting because when it does that then the sword cut itself becomes support and look what we have we have this nice arc you see that guys the very very nice arc at this level on the four hour chart so before we had it on the daily with this big arc on the four hour there and it looks it looks decent on the daily but it looks better on the four hour and now we're on top of a sword cut and we're having the same arc so what do i expect this is bullish for it to break through the sword cut at a time when it should be falling because we had support here so price is like eh, man, well, let's go up again and then it got shut down by the sword cut but then it said no we don't want these lower prices and it pushed it through. And now we're coming back down into that area. Well, what do I think is going to happen next, guys? Well, what I think is going to happen next is simply that. After we bounce off of this sword in this in this sword area. Somewhere around, uh, I think we should be getting it at 18.24. 18.24 or around, uh, here's the middle one. 1959 so i'm going to take this screenshot and i'm going to upload it right to our site so you can have these and uh, what i'm looking at okay so i'm looking to get through those areas so and uh, this is what i do i'll just pull it up and then what i'll do is i'll pull up patreon make a post and if you're not a member go ahead and join me because when i get these updates i'll post them up and you'll get the notification. So I'll type in XRP, four-hour chart from live video. So if you're a membership a member on the site, you'll be able to get those kinds of updates uh, for various cryptos that I'm looking at. Uh, currently, I'm long XRP. Nothing in this video is ever financial or trading advice. All right. Welcome back, team, to part two of today's video. We're going to be going over XDC and XLM in this video. So... I hope you enjoy it. Um, we'll get right into it. But I wanted to ask a question. Uh, does this color suit me? I feel like a lumberjack. 
you know, I don't know if this color goes with, you know, like the beard. Everything I was looking in the mirror, I said, man, I feel like cutting the tree or something like that. You know, like doing something manly, you know, like showing off my chest hair or something, you know, like uh, wrestling a grizzly bear. You know, that's kind of what I feel like, you know, having the, having this beard going on. It's kind of nice. I kind of like, it. what do you think? Should I keep it off? Should I keep it on? Uh, one time uh, a lady said, hey, you can rock the beard and you can rock the, walk the, rock the clean shaven. So I'm giving a... Uh, Give my wife some time to kind of see what she likes. If she likes the beard, we keep it a little bit. Uh, if she likes a longer beard, then, you know, we'll see about that. Um, but I've been trimming it just to keep it this length. I kind of like this length. Um, I kind of really don't want something longer than that. But we will post that question, and you'll have to answer that one in the chat. Uh, should Jay Song keep his beard, uh, or should he uh, trim it, you know, so... We'll see what you think. Let's get into XLM. All right, XLM. XLM is looking pretty good. Um, per my last analysis, we are still on track to be hitting our target. 4580. I like it. Okay. Um, so this is one of my charts of XLM. I just recently drew a flat, uh, which is at the core of here. And you can see that when we did draw that flat um, price... Well, price touched it there, okay, right there. And then also price has touched it just recently, okay? When we came down on July 22nd, we came to that flat. So I just wanted to draw that so you guys can have that. Um, that is like the safety net. Also, price really bounced on those uh, the parabolic, which was this one. Um, it actually should be that color. Um, we took that line and we duplicated that out. And uh, we sat right on top of that in this area. And then from there, price was going on its merry way. Okay. Um, I had drew that at the wick as well. And both were broken. And that zone where price broke, that was the sword cut. So if you guys wanted to draw it so you can understand what's happening, um, that's what happened. So we got the big bounce in that area. When price went up and into that area. So let me show you. Price went up, came back into the sword area, and now we're on our merry way. Uh, we did we did need to uh, come up to some resistance. So let's see what resistances there are. There is the parabolic cut right here. And let's draw that on the four hour. Let's turn it up and see what we got. So if I was drawing the parabolic uh, where where those lines cut, we would have we would have an important area to watch for, and to see what price would do and how it would behave in the area when it cut. Now, because it cut right on the tip, it's actually acts like a resistance, and it could be a strong resistance depending on what price does. So, there's a couple of things that can happen, and I need to show you where they are. On its own, price can come up to this area, and then come down. But something else caught my eye. When we came up to this area, we came only about right here, and we didn't even touch the target, and then we came back down. That's mighty suspicious. Some people would say that's weakness, but I would say that's price setting itself up for something bigger. Because if you're going to ever have a time where you're going to break through a, a known area of resistance, you need a good setup if you're going to be able to break through strong and continue up. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to hit that resistance and you're going to come back down. And you can come down hard. So you have to watch for that kind of thing. So when I see price acting like this and it shies away from its targets, I see that often. And when it shies away from its target, it's like, uh, why are we shying away? There's a, there's a reason. And that's because price is setting itself up for something else. Now, why would it come back down to this area? I'm glad you asked, team. I'm super glad you asked. Let's go to the back to the daily chart, and you'll see what I mean, chili bean. So what was the major areas of here? What It was this red line here. That was the major resistance area. Okay? Put it back in place. 
price had came all the way down and before the end of that time it came right back up what was the end of that time it was a daily chart this was back in may of this year may 23rd so if you're following along may 23rd you can draw those lines and what we did was we drew the core at the bottom of that level it was significant for two reasons this one and that one price bounced up there it did not close below that line then it touched a third time here and then we kind of just hovered above and then we finally went through and we tested that line on the underside and then we came down and then we came up and this time we shied away from it and we were on our way down so this so resistance became i'm sorry that support became the new resistance you understand okay let's move on now that line shows up in today's price action i hope you guys are learning a lot during this in these videos okay in the last few days so we came up to this area on august 13th and we kissed the line just a little bit came right back down and the next bar we pushed through and get and guys guess what we did when we pushed through we pushed through on high volume okay what does that mean when you have a known breakout point on high volume there's a reason for that extra energy and effort price is trying to tell you something and what it's trying to tell you is that we push through on purpose because we want to have higher prices. If we ever push through on that, then anything below that line becomes the discounted prices. These prices are the discounted prices. Okay. And that means that those are on sale because prices normally now that we're in this range should be in this range. So this is the, the prices that they push it back down just a little bit or allow it to fall just a little bit just so they can scoop up more goodies and they already know the battle is won. They know the battle was won here. So when it comes down, they're not scared of that. They're not scared of this line anymore. And neither should you be. Okay. Now there's a chance what price will prove itself, but it already broke it up. And now when is the time it's going to prove itself? Well, I actually believe that's today. And this is why I'm explaining so much. So when price broke through this line, it said, hey, you're not the boss of me. It came down and showed it was like nothing. Didn't even respect the line. But now that we came all the way down for on this daily chart, look where we're about to close on. We have, oops, how much time do we have? We have two hours uh, and 58 minutes as of the time of this video. I know the time out here is this 9.41 a.m. That is not the correct time. That is not live. That's just when I plug this my iPad into my Mac using the QuickTime player, it keeps changing the time to 9.41. I have no idea how to change that. So don't ask me, but I like it. Okay. Um, now, I think price is actually coming to touch this. And it may, it may not. But what it's saying is now is this line is becoming not important and so when that's not as important we can start fading that line away so you see the color i can fade it all the way to make it invisible but i'm gonna leave it about halfway so we know it's still there it can actually act like a support now because it's been broken and we can actually draw it and uh and maybe i will we'll just turn it green so you guys can see it because now it's acting like a support and any time now Price is free to go to the next target. Now, what is the next target? It's here. What is that price? What is that price? 40.4027. But am I scared of that? No. And why not? Well, because we have a good setup. Okay. Now, what is the setup? The setup is that nice curve into this prices. Now, it's like a cup with handle pattern, you may have noticed, but it's like half a cup. And then when we get that, we're able to go through into the next areas. So be ready for that, that we're actually going to punch through 4027, and we may actually go to 45 quickly. Okay? Why is 45 quickly? Uh, well, because uh, why is 4580? Because of this parabolic from this zone here that comes to fight us here in this area. And I already did the, the exact calculation, so I'm not gonna do it again. 
but suffice to show you it's this thing right here got it so that's where i'm looking at right now um yeah that's about that's about where we're at with xlm it's not so com it's not so complicated uh, on the daily chart let's go to the four hour see if we see anything else on the four hour chart if i were to draw these core points to here um connecting those they seem like a, a point i would be drawing this so there's kind of a little bit of a safety net here and there's a chance that price could drop to those levels quickly and let's put them out there so you can have them and there's your price the lows right now 30 49 that's the range we're kind of right in the middle of that range will price uh be able to hold at these levels and go there i don't know we it's possible we can come back to that level and then be able to break through to this area um but it's possible uh we may we just maybe not have had enough steam to continue through um as we are moving up volume it seems to be decreasing a little bit that seems to be what's going on so with xlm we may have maybe losing some steam we did have a high volume uh on this on this red bar up here but then uh it was like a, a real big push but the bars before were nothing so it's possible that that was buying in there but it might be selling so i'm, I'm kind of undecided because it's not just red bar we close near the middles of the red if that was all red, I would say it's selling um, at the top. And then we would see no demand on this bar. But the, this bar is kind of an up bar still, a little bit higher than normal volume, about the same. But when we are coming down, when we finally did get some more red bars, we're having low and low volume. So, so it's kind of price is kind of telling us, hey, I don't really want lower prices. So it's kind of just falling rather than being sold. If it was sold, it would be look more straight down. So it's kind of just like um, no no interest in price. So we need to see what would happen. It's very possible we can just stay above this green. Um, but if we did get some selling pressure and needed to spike, it would spike to that gold line and then hard close in that area. Okay, so those are the green numbers. And this is the main number. Let's just put it right in the middle so you can have a, a good average. Okay, guys, so just putting these numbers in this, this zone. Again, the numbers are 3649 is where we have our first support uh, with another support underneath at approximately 3489. And then we have our next roof at point four. 027 which i'm actually expecting that one to be broken so don't expect it to hang out there very long and then finally the next real target 4455 so let's draw that out okay and so here's the drawing for you guys we'll upload that okay guys so thank you very much for that. Before we get into the next chart, we're going to do XDC. Uh, I did want to continue uh, uh, two questions that I got um, during the filming. So, so that first question I didn't complete the answer to is, will there be a, a government buyback? I did talk about this in one of my videos. I think I actually inter uh, answered this question in the interview question. But in a nutshell, it's very difficult for them for the government to do a mandatory buyback okay so i think the government is going to have some kind of program that's linked to xrp but they're going to have to do their own buying and they're going to have to pay those prices of whatever the price it is if not if if not they've already bought their shares that they plan to distribute um if if that's the case that's that's just a rumor now the thing is XRP is decentralized. It is not centralized, popular to maybe what you may have heard. Ripple, the company, is the custodian for XRP. They are not, they do not own XRP them, in and of themselves. Um, and they're not the, I should say, I mean, they have it, it's public. 
they don't have it like in one central location. That's not how it works. So you have people in every country and every nation in the world who owning XRP. So how do you force them people to buy it back? What, what government is strong enough to actually, to actually um, compensate every XRP? There isn't. There isn't one. Because you'd have to have a one world government to do that kind of thing. Even the SEC admits in some of their own talks, which they, they get the words crossed all the time, that they don't have regulations over this. They want them to come under the regulations, but SEC is corrupt and we know it. And you just have to follow the, the case, the lawsuit you know, details to find that out really, really easy. All the, beha the behind the door deals with Ethereum, shaking hands in, uh, in private, by pretending to sue them and then selling off all the socks stocks to your your buddies and signing a contract with Ethereum and then later in, oh we'll drop this we'll drop the case and then releasing it but you're already in position to have millions of dollars so there's some corruption that goes there so I think there is a kind of a lot of fear that all of our XRP is just going to be taken away now if it is taken away and like i said earlier if we, if it gets taken away i think it's going to be taken away at a four thousand dollar level um plus i think it's gonna be a four thousand plus dollar level from the things i've seen um but again money is going to be valued differently into the future so how much is that four thousand going to be if we go back down to 1950s prices for a lot of things when a new monetary system switches over that four thousand dollars could be worth a lot of money in today's, you know, in today's standards. So you you want to keep that in mind uh, when thinking about that kind of things. Next question: Do you think Bitcoin will disappear after the market crash? It's possible that Bitcoin, after they're exposed for everything, and I believe that they're going to be exposed towards the final days, right before the crash. And maybe that will be the catalyst to drop everything, you know, or part of the catalyst to drop everything in prices. People may not want to even touch Bitcoin into the future unless it's really greatly revamped. And even then, like, it looks like it's going to be regulated into oblivion. And when you compare the power standards and everything, like, I don't think Bitcoin's going to exist into the future. And if it does, it may exist in a different type of form. It may it may take the form of the Ripple technology, the interledger protocol that XRP uses, kind of like some of these other coins are, we're hearing rumors of them to be ISO 2000, uh, 222 compliant. Some of them are having to change completely um, to come under that type of standard because they're really raising the standard. And during a heavy time of regulation, there's only going to be a few coins that survive, and they are going to be, I believe, the ISO 222 coins. Bitcoin isn't one of them. It's possible it, you, you'll just never see, never see Bitcoin again, really, after those days. But we have to really see those events play out. And then these things that I'm talking about is going to make a lot more sense. Because right now, it's like, Bitcoin going away? What are you talking about? There's things you don't understand about Bitcoin. There's things prophetically that I've heard in private about Bitcoin, and there's a lot of reasons why it needs to come down and why there's some very bad characters using Bitcoin for bad purposes. And when you when you hear about those things and when they come to the to the public light, when they come to the forefront and to the future and people start hearing what it was actually used for then there's going to people are going to lose their appetite for bitcoin so if it exists it just it won't exist in the same form that it is now does inflation influence crypto in general i think so i i think so because a lot of monies in the world are still pegged to the dollar but if the dollar collapses you're going to have collapse of a lot of economies that are not set up correctly and yet behind the scenes, all of them are already really set up to go back on to um, the interledger protocol. They're all set up. That was like 90 something countries were set to go on live in November with or without America. And that's in November. And 
those documents are available. People are not knowing about them. You can do your homework about it and find out. But that's becoming more and more apparent with each passing day. People are saying, yep, we're using the Ripple technology. Here's you know, this and here's that. There's patents. And from different countries saying that, yep, we're going to use the Ripple coin or Ripple technology. What is Ripple technology? It's XRP. Okay, so uh, if dollars collapse, which I'm expecting a, a monetary collapse, countries will collapse in their money, but only for a very small time before they flip the switch, which is only going to drive up XRP prices even higher. So maybe that. Do you think there will be regulation of crypto in the near future this year? I think it could be uh, before November. I mean, uh, yeah, before November, sometime in October. Someone asked me if I had any proof about the ISO 222 uh, coins, the ones that survive. They said, "Am I uh, will the will the ISO 222 coins survive regulation, or is it just a gut feeling?" So we have evidence of the ISO 222. I've seen a lot of documents. It's been a while. Um, it's been a while that this information has been public. I believe some of it was on the FedNow website. Um, I've seen a few, but I'm, I'm going to need you guys to do your, your own homework about XRP. I'm, my job here is not to, not to convince you guys of what XRP is. You need to do your own homework for that. That's, that's not my channel. There's a lot of great channels talking about that um, because I don't need to get into any debates about those kinds of things or what, what it is. Um, my job here is to provide you guys with the price action and to help you guys with timing and to understand the timings and where all of this fits in. There are plenty, plenty of very good channels that talk about all that they, they open documents. Some of them are really long. Uh, I think the simplest one is Moon Limbo. The guy really put some good videos together going step by step over this. There's a few really polished ones, too. And, and they'll go over all of those documents and you can open up on your websites. Uh, you can click on them. You can type them into your browsers and you can look and read through all of that. So ISO 222 is absolutely a thing. It is the standard. But will it be adopted like as the it will it be adopted as the official regulation and everything will go away that we don't know. But it really, really makes sense when you when you put everything together like for example what is xrp how does it operate who is on board how does it flow it's a bridge currency and who is what other currencies are compatible with those what other technologies are compatible with those well iso 222 if xrp is adopted only really iso 200 coins or compliant coins are going to be into be able to use in that ledger cbdc's are going to be used in that ledger you know, the, the new American, whatever the American dollar, digital dollar is going to be, which I have some, you know, hints on what I think it's going to be, but I don't know. Um, all the countries of the world, those are compliant to be used in that protocol. So to ask me if ISO 222 is 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 a, is a really like a thing that can wipe away, you, you got to look at it. You got to look at it. You got to look at it in the context of utility. If everyone in the world is using uh, an electric, uh, an, a gas vehicle, and I say, hey, electric cars are the future, you, you may laugh at me because you're like, oh, we have to sign. But then what if I tell you, oh, we made a battery, though, that, nev that never, be never needs to be recharged? You all, you know, all it takes is for you to put two and two together and say, wait a minute. If you have an electric car but never need to charge a battery, you solved all the problems of gas vehicles and then some. So you, can, you can't deny saying electric vehicles wouldn't be the wave of the future. If you solve that problem, then gas cars will be a thing of the past. Some people will use them. Oh, yeah, those, maybe they'll still be here. But once you start having big manufacturers saying, hey, if we don't have to pay for gas anymore, if we don't ever have to charge our batteries before, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, if it's a battery that can self-run or whatever, that that uh, that solves everything. So there are there are certain technologies that come along every so years, every so often, that just completely blow everything out of the water. That is what's going to happen with the interledger protocol, 
that XRP is using. It, it's the bridge currency for the world, for everything, for NFTs, for uh, CBDCs, and for other cryptocurrencies. There's no going back once they flip that switch. Your life, I mean, even banks are going to be slowly becoming a thing of the past, and they cannot fight that. So you either need to be on the winning side of if you're one of those banks, like you invested and that's you go out with a bank making million dollars on uh, millions. I'm sorry, making billions of dollars, trillions, maybe. Um, when you see that flip of the switch happen, the whole world is going to change money. How we how everyone uses and exchanges hands with money. It's three seconds. It takes only three seconds to change, you know, hundred and fifty thousand dollar transaction. Just in three seconds. The SWIFT technology that we, we use, it's all of a thing of the past. So, so guys, I, I just want you to be really aware of that kind of thing, that ISO 200 is really, is the standard the standard? Yeah, because nothing else really comes close. And if, it co if a coin refuses to be standard, then all it takes is a little bit of regulation. And any coins that are not on board with that regulation the intel from the intel community is that 99% of coins will vanish. They're regulated into oblivion. And many will not even fight the regulation. It's too much of a process. But the ISO 222 coins have already gone through a process and have been for many years to try to get to this point. So if you didn't already try to set up, you're going to be left behind. And there's only going to be a handful of cryptos and those cryptos a lot of money is going to be poured into those and those cryptos are going to have a very, very big bull runs. And I even heard from, I think it was Prophet Clement that the, the future, I think it was him. He was talking about when he talked about it. Uh, I can't remember, but there was a prophet that I heard. He mentioned that there would be certain cryptocurrencies, new ones that would be very, it would in the future, they would become very, that the, these currencies in the future would be used and uh, there would be new cryptos that you never heard before, new ones sprouting up everywhere. Um, but they would do really well. But so then what happens to the old ones? Well, that lines up with the whole regulation to oblivion Intel that we have from the Intel community about these things. So is it a hunch? Uh, it, it, is some of it's on faith? Is it going to happen? I think so. Can I say it for certain? No, but it lines up with everything. It lines up with the data. Um, it lines up, you know, not this chart data, but the Intel community data. Uh, it lines up with the agendas. It, it lines up with a lot of things, and it lines up with the prophetic. So I hope that answers you guys' questions about. And that's why maybe you, you should be, if we were coming to a time where there's going to be great regulation, maybe you should be looking at coins that are ISO 222 compliant. XTC, XLM. XRP, Algo, IOTA, there's a few. And there's rumors that Dodge is going to become uh, ISO compliant. If not, it already is. I don't know. Um, there's some rumors that other coins may be. I don't know. And uh, I think each crypto may or may not survive on a case-by-case -case basis. I will say this. If there is a crypto winter, which I absolutely believe that winter is coming, it's a lot easier to implement regulations when you clear the board of players. What do I mean? If there's a big crash and cryptos that were once thousands of dollars are now cents, it's easier just to close it right then and there when all the big money's out. Otherwise, if you close it while well, it's thousands, you can really hurt people. You can you, you you can be sued. You can be like a lot of stuff can happen. But if the if the governments of the world were to flip that switch, which I believe that switch the flip of the switch is actually ready to go in November. Um, with or without America, that would be a good. That would be the perfect time. All right, guys, let's get into XDC. So, if you've been in XDC, you should have made a lot of money. You guys should have made your targets. Um, both uh, XDC, XLM, uh, they're they they're there. They hit their targets. Here is where we got in around August, at the beginning of August, late July. And I had put these targets up and the target was here at this red line. And we had this on our maps in the chart room. Um, so again, nothing, this is never trading or financial advice. 
But you guys, if you have been shadowing me, you should have made some money. Okay, because it wasn't hard. But it was scary. It was scary for you. I understand because you're looking at prices coming down and then you got that curve going on. You're like, oh my gosh, we're way down here. And he and I'm putting up a target saying, okay, this is where we're going. And you saw that in my chart rooms. And then for me to say that is pretty bold. But what happened? Well, we went right there and we stopped. Now, where we're going to go next, that's the question. Um, I did draw this parallel fan here, this this line here. Oops, I want to move that angle. And we saw price reacting pretty well, bullish, but pressing down. I mean, we came up and came all the way down. Then we went up again, came all the way back down. Then we went up and up and up again, and then we came all the way back up again into that area and pushed all the way down. And then finally we pushed up, and we finally pushed just a little bit below it, above it. Do you see how we pushed just above it? And then we sat on top of it. We came down, and it didn't come down. Finally, it stayed above there. That's very interesting. That's very, very interesting because then we just need another re uh, reason to go up. Well, when do we get our next reason? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if we were draw... If we were to draw our cores here, which this one is like funny, so I don't like to draw those when I see that it's like funny like that, um, but I would draw that. And what do you know? Hey, hey, let's draw it straight. We have a winner. And so then we have another support area and then that support was the catalyst, okay? And that was, now we're no longer afraid of this line. So we can beat that line very easily. And once we beat it, we can actually go to the target line, which was here. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are learning something, how price reacts to these type of lines. That's why I spent so much time going over XRP and those lines, because that, that line on XRP has been broken. So if we go uh, above from my last video, the, the, that next line, uh, the purple line, that's been broken. So if we go up there again, we're not scared of it anymore. We should be going higher and continuing to our targets. But I hope you guys made some good money. If you do withdraw, remember to give your tithes and offerings to the Lord. Okay. There are monies that belong to the Lord. Um, right now, where to next? Well, let's see. That was our projection. Um, so at this moment, I don't have a target. Um, let me see if I can. If I were to take those those bottoms and we phantom it out and then make it parallel. No, I don't. I don't have a target at the moment. I don't. Does that mean to sell? Um, not necessarily. But the setup is very. The setup is not the not the most healthy i would say because look at how many times we went up and down on that it was pretty wild i mean yeah we were getting to our target but gosh it was scary and i feel i feel bad <laughs> i mean i told you guys i was like oh i like this setup let's make some money and we did but um but the way up was a wild ride i mean you were going up and then come down up and down up and down. i mean gosh i feel bad especially this is your first trade you're like oh my gosh oh my gosh jay song's buying it. uh x xlm so you know, that's that's going to be kind of the, 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 the kicker for that. Um, what would we want next? Well, we'd want price to come up and break through that line. If we break through and then sit on the line, then we can go up. That's uh, 1873. But will we get there? Will that actually happen? Um, you know, we... It's possible we can come back down and sit in this area. It's possible we can come back down and into that area and bounce. With all these spikes, I wouldn't be surprised if price actually spikes through and comes back up a little bit. And then we can go through. But once we come through, I would like a rest before going higher. Um, we'd have to do some more projections to see. But currently, that was a projection. On regular, here it is. That's the regular view. That is my projection. So I think price is due for a rest, but that doesn't mean we have a signal. So I'm not telling you guys to short it at the moment. That would be bullish. You don't just trade just because there's no trade. Sometimes there's no trade. Sometimes there's a trade, 
Sometimes there's not a trade and sometimes there's a sell. So sometimes there's a buy a trade, a sell trade or a no trade, which you just stay away and you let price do its thing. Not everything is predictable in the markets. Not everything. A lot of stuff is. A lot of stuff is. Um, this one might act like a support down here that has yet to be challenged. So that, that seems pretty attractive. Um, if price comes down like here, that would be good. We, we would need to come down 122. Um, if we get a settlement announcement tomorrow or into this weekend and X, X, uh, RP does really good, then XDC could possibly just go to that upper level. So that's, this is like option A right here. And the settlement could be good for XDC and other cryptos. Um, so let's draw those. So here's option A. We'll send that to the chart room on uh, Patreon okay, for memberships because this is XTC. And here's option B. So we'll also send that to the membership room. Oh, okay. And both of these options have been uploaded to the membership section. Remember, membership starts at $1.00. Uh, it is a donation of any kind. It could be a dollar. It could be a thousand dollars. Whatever's in your heart to give. Uh, a lot of people just give five dollars, uh, ten dollars. Uh, some people give two hundred dollars. God bless you. Whatever amount you give, it's all out of the goodness of your heart. And may the Lord bless you for that. And uh, and I'm sorry, I can't. I try to answer almost every single person personally when I get a notification that someone gives. Um, I'm sorry, I can't get to everyone. But I, I want to just say thank you, everyone. You guys are doing just blessing, uh, blessing me, and I just love it. So thank you guys for that, and I hope my charts are also blessing you guys, okay? All right, guys, and I know that I said I was only doing uh, XDC and XLM, but let's uh, – I, I want to give you guys Digibyte um, because I, I uh, somebody was really asking for that right now. So since I'm filming, and you caught me while I'm filming, uh, let's go over Digibyte. All right, guys, let's take a look at Digibyte. The last time we had an update was on the 16th. And on the 16th, I gave you guys these targets uh, and these maps. So these maps are still in play. Nothing has changed so far with the targets. Um, we're, we're, we're coming closer to these targets on, on Digibyte. I really think once we get to these areas, we will be experiencing, um, we'll be experiencing a downturn of price. Mm, this is the zone here. This is gonna be a little bit lower, but yeah, these are the price. I look. Uh, our first re uh, area is ten cents, point ten six eight, and then after that, it's gonna be point one four four three, and then highest uh, high was one six zero eight. So once we get past ten sixty eight, I think we'll be able to go there. You guys from our chart room the last time we were in digibyte we were at 70 cents um and looking for those same targets so this these still apply although we're not at 70 cents anymore we're at 74 cents um so you guys if you have been in digibyte you should be still doing well since my last video i am not personally trading digibyte uh currently i'm just trading xrp a small portion of uh is in xlm and xdc but now I'm going to be selling my uh, all of my XLM and all of my XDC. I'll be uh, trading all of that just for XRP and maybe something else. I'm still looking. See what I like. And this is the map. And it just has been uploaded to our membership site. So there it is, guys. Okay. Now, uh, before we conclude this video, I want to let you know I'll now be filming uh the context for shiba theta and somebody just requested ada and then also we got a request for something called cosmos but i asked for a, a, a ticker symbol and i didn't get one yet so we might not do that one um but uh we can always just upload the the map but sometimes i'll just do a video uh and upload the maps there but i'm just letting you guys know what we have for you today um i might go out and get me some ice cream because it's delicious. The last thing, guys, is that 
uh, I'm going to be doing the Dreams video uh, with a Melody song. We're going to be filming that. I believe we're going to do it together. We may do it tonight, but I do have a meeting tonight, so it's possible. I may just film it early in the morning tomorrow, and uh, you guys can see that. We'll also spend time reading the Bible, uh, more uh, reading the Bible to you guys, and then uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll share those things and just have a good chat. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there in that video. And uh, it'll be more uh, geared towards the spiritual things. Um, and if you if you're not familiar with my work, you know, just just I just want to let you know, I'm just unashamed at this moment. I have a lot of things in my life to be ashamed about. I have a lot of things in my life to be ashamed about, but not Christ. In fact, the more that the more that I see how much the truth of who I am, the more I see how much I'm in need of a savior. I'm nothing. I'm nothing without him. Nothing in this life that I you could ever do in your life is good enough to make up for your sins. For letting people down, for being a failure at times of your life. There's nothing that you can ever do that's good enough. You can't earn your way into his love, you can't earn your way into heaven. Because the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Christ loved us and he died for us. I could tell you stories. But in Christ, I can do all things. In Christ, you can do all things. It doesn't matter where you come from or who you've been. You know, I, I look at this this whole thing and I and, and some people look at it in, in a different scope, but some people are waiting for money to give them a fresh new start. They're waiting for XRP to activate or us to go to $100 or even $12 and it's life changing, it will be. And you're waiting for money to maybe create a new identity, change who you are. Friends, you can change your clothes. You can change your talk and your walk. But only Christ can change you on the inside. Only Christ can give you something worth living for. Even if you have been a failure. Even if you have let people down. Even if you have made a mess of your life. Maybe you lost the respect of your loved ones, of your, your children, of your spouse. Maybe you lost your integrity or your dignity. As the Bible says, do not give your integrity away. And maybe some of you have given your integrity away. Maybe you can't even look at yourself in the mirror because you don't like what you see. Friends, Christ offers a new identity for you. Jesus said to him, very verily, I say unto you, unless the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus wasn't talking about physical birth, but something more deeper, something spiritual. Because out of the spirit, all the things that are physical have been made. Out of the invisible, the visible has been made. When God spoke, let there be light, light became 
Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and thou hearest the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Friends, there's a new identity that Christ offers. It's called being born again. You see, his blood that he paid for is a cleansing blood. And that blood can cover you and wash away your sins. Some of you need to hear this. It doesn't change the past but it changes the future and it changes everything from that moment on even your sins get remembered no more if you stand before almighty father god he's going to look at you and he's just going to see robes of white which the bible calls a garment of salvation and he's going to see the blood of his son washed away your sins white as snow and that's for you that's the gift that he offers and i'm selfish it offers it's the gift offered to me and for that i'm thankful i'm really thankful Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you so much for this gift of salvation. We don't deserve it, God. But because of you and your price that you paid for us. I love it, Lord. My sins deserve death. Because the Bible says the soul who sins will die. But because of you, your mercy, your kindness to us. Thank you. Thank you for being the Lord of my life. Thank you for coming into my heart. And thank you for changing me. On the inside. And making me born again. Because I need to be born in you, Father. In you, I need to be born. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done. I believe in you. And I trust in you. Please help us during these times, Lord. Don't let people, my prayer for them, Lord, is that they will not wait until they have money to change because money can corrupt. And they know it. And I know it. But if we have you, you'll help us because it says where your treasure is, there your heart is also. You're my treasure. Money will come and money will go. We can never take anything with us. Except for the spiritual things. And the impacts we made on people's lives. That always remains. I thank you, Lord. Let us... Plant seeds that last into eternity in heaven. Thank you for this platform. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, guys, take care. Um, I'll put out those membership coins for you guys. And, uh, and uh, then... I'm going to go get my ice cream and enjoy my day.
and you guys make it a great Sunday. Uh, look for me and Melody uh, to be back tomorrow with that Jinx video. Uh, we shall post it early, as early as we can. I love you guys in Jesus' name. God bless you.